In this video, we're going to talk about objects that are on an inclined plane. An inclined plane is really just a fancy name for a ramp. There are a lot of physics problems that involve inclined planes. The reason inclined planes are so interesting is because the force of gravity is going to be used to change the motion of an object, or in other words, to accelerate an object. For example, this car is on an incline, and if this car were to shift into neutral, you can imagine what would happen. It would gradually start accelerating down this ramp. Now in this video we're going to ignore friction. So let's start with an example problem. A 0.5 kilogram toy car is placed at the top of a ramp that is at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal. Find the acceleration of the car as it moves down the ramp. First thing we should do with any problem that involves an inclined plane is we should draw a free body diagram. So I already have my ramp drawn here, and let's draw a few things that we know. I've, I've underlined the things we know in green. First of all, we know the angle of this incline to be 40 degrees. Next thing we can do is draw a free body diagram for our car. Free body diagrams represent objects by a box, and then we draw the forces that are acting on that object. So the force of gravity is going to be straight downwards. I'm going to label that F sub G. And I also know that the normal force is going to be perpendicular to the surface here. And so you can see it's slightly tilted compared to the force of gravity. And I'm also going to label that with a capital N to indicate normal force. Normal force is the force of a surface pushing up an object. I can also list some other things that I know. I know the mass of the car, so I'm just going to write that here. It is 500 grams or 0.5 kilograms. And what I'm looking for here is the acceleration of this car as it moves down the ramp. Now, this problem is actually a, a problem involving two dimensions here. We have force of gravity and normal force going in different directions. I need to make this problem a little easier for myself, and I don't want to have things at angles. So right now, it looks like the normal force is at an angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my frame of reference. And as a physicist, you get the privilege of doing this. And with an inclined plane, it's always best to make your x axes to be traveling along the surface of the inclined plane. So if you kind of tilt your head here, now you can see that the force of gravity is what is actually at an angle. Now the reason that I've done this, that I've changed my frame of reference, is that I'm going to split the force of gravity here into its component vectors. And so I'm going to have my y vector here, I'm going to label that fgy, and my x vector, I'm going to label that fg of x, and now I can kind of ignore this force of gravity vector because I have it split up into an x and y vector. Now I don't have anything at an angle anymore. Now the normal force is going to be exactly equal to the force of gravity in the y direction. I'm going to change the colors of those two vectors to blue so that we can see that they're the same. Normal force and force of gravity in the y have the exact same magnitude, just opposite directions. My force of gravity in the x, I'll just change its color here as well to purple. And so we're going to ignore force of gravity that's going straight downwards. Okay, before I go any further, let me go back to what I'm actually looking for in this problem. I want to find acceleration. We can use the equation F net is equal to MA. That's our standard equation of force. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now the f net force this right here is the combination of all forces that are acting on this object. So again, if we're ignoring this FG, since we've split it into its vectors here, we really have three forces. We have the normal force, FG in the Y, and FG in the X. Okay, so here's my equation to find F net. F net is going to be all the different forces added together. Now the normal force and the force of gravity in the Y, this force and this force, are going to be equal and opposite. So if I add those together, I'm going to end up with zero. So really I can simplify this to say F net is just going to be FG in the X direction. So how would we find FG in the X direction? 
I'm going to show you two useful equations when we're dealing with inclined planes. When we're dealing with an inclined plane and we've separated our gravity vector into its components like this, we just end up with a right angle triangle. Here's my right angle. And so this angle right here, this is kind of the cool thing, is that this is going to be 40 degrees just like this angle down here. So those angles are going to be the same. And so I could use sine and cosine to find these unknown sides. And so anytime you're looking for, and you have uh, things split up like this, anytime you're looking for f, g, and the y for a problem like this one with an inclined plane, you can use cosine of theta. So I have the force of gravity in the y is equal to mass times gravity. Anytime we're trying to calculate force of gravity, we just use f equals ma, and the acceleration due to gravity is a constant, 9.81. So I've just rearranged it to show that. If I'm calculating fg and the x, I can use sine of theta. Now just keep in mind that fg and the y is going to be the same as normal force. They're just going to have different directions, so I can put that negative sign in there. That's just going to be zero, so I don't need to calculate that part. So let's go ahead and calculate fg and the x. So I've plugged in all my numbers, and fg and the x is going to be equal to 3.5. 1.5 newtons. Now I can find acceleration. Remember that acceleration is going to be found using this equation here. So I can rearrange this equation to solve for the acceleration. I also know that F net is the same thing as Fg and the x, which I just found. So let's go ahead and rearrange our equation. I can divide both sides by uh, mass to cancel mass on the right side of the equation, I'll end up with acceleration is equal to F net, which is just Fg in the x, over mass, which we do know mass. So let's go ahead and plug in our numbers and find the acceleration. And so acceleration is equal to 6.3 meters per second squared. So just to recap what we did, we were dealing with an object on an inclined plane. So I started by drawing a free body diagram, and then I drew in the forces acting on the object. We had the force of gravity moving downwards, and then the normal force which was perpendicular to the surface. I changed my frame of reference so that the x-axis was going to be along the surface, and the y would be uh, parallel to our normal force. Then I split up the force of gravity into its components so that they would be using our axis here. Now I could ignore the force of gravity. I know that the force of gravity in the y is equal to the normal force, so they would cancel each other out, and all I'd be left with was force of gravity in the x direction. I found that, and then I plugged that into my equation over here to solve for the acceleration of the object. And that is an inclined plane without friction.